Welcome to the easier way to sell presentation of Close the Deal Without Selling. Here's your host and developer of the easier way to sell, Ike Krieger. Welcome to episode 54 of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast. I'm really excited about you hearing from our guest today, Rhonda Shear, because she will help you, no doubt about it, with your social media marketing, especially when it comes to LinkedIn and any other business platform that you may be on. Also, I had a breakthrough when it comes to the easier way to sell model, and we'll be getting into that in a minute. I got to tell you, it was a real big breakthrough for me, a realization that I hadn't expected, and I think it will play itself out in a very positive way for both of us. So enjoy. Let's get right into it. Here I am in my 70s. I've had over 50 years of training and teaching experience in communications and boom, something new hit me just this morning. And as you may know, I'm retired. Yet, my commitment to making my communications model called the easier way to sell available to everyone everywhere hasn't dwindled a bit. I occasionally still consult and conduct a few trainings and I'm about to give a brand new class to an international networking organization. I'll be sharing my thoughts about selling and presenting yourself. Go figure. <laughs> As I was considering the title for the presentation, I decided to look back over the message I've been conveying throughout my training career. And in a nutshell, you've heard me say that there's an easier way to sell. Those who use my model are equipped to have an authentic sales conversation that makes it far easier and happier to succeed than the traditional way to sell. Here on the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast, we've touched upon how challenging it is to present yourself in a way that first calls for someone to be interested in talking with you at all, and second, is having that someone be interested or have a need for what it is that you offer, or as the easier way to sell refers to it, the problem that you sell. So as I was putting this class together, I was thinking in terms of how I teach people to present themselves when asking for an appointment, participating in an appointment, or responding to the question, okay, like, what do you do? The way I usually answer that question is that if you're in appointment-based sales, you know how frustrating and stressed out you get when you give a great presentation, but they still don't buy, or when you tell someone what you do and rather than them go, wow, I could really use that, they say, oh, that's nice. This morning, it occurred to me that the problem I solve is more basic than selling something more easily. Selling something more easily is a product of what I really teach. The problem I address is that we as human beings have a hard time presenting ourselves or our offering as effectively as we would like. So, after all these years, a paradigm shift occurred. Rather than teach an easier way to sell, I teach an easier way to present yourself or your product. This shift in the way you present make selling yourself or your product, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, easier. So it seems that what I really do is teach an easier way to present yourself, your idea, or your product that doesn't end up sounding salesy and inauthentic. And when you learn how to present yourself in this way, you're giving yourself a gift. Maybe I'm being a little self-engrandizing when I speak of it as a gift to yourself. However, the last 30 years have shown that the model I created is ideal for getting past all the challenges that come up when you're trying to present yourself or your offering. You will be less frustrated, less stressed out, and happier when you sell. So, I'm giving you and I'm, I'm giving me a new perspective on my model. 
When you're adapting to the easier way to sell, it will be helpful if you approach your communication through the lens of an easier way to present yourself. I invite you to think in terms of, how do I present myself in a way that produces my desired outcome? The answer is, use the easier way to sell and achieve your desired outcome more easily and more often, because all it takes is a simple shift in how you already communicate. This shift in language creates an environment in which the person with whom you're having the conversation becomes enrolled in finding out how you can help them solve their problem. Presenting yourself effectively clarifies that you're there to solve their problem rather than yours. And when others join you in this communications environment, they no longer feel the need to defend themselves against a salesman. They're no longer concerned about being sold something they may not want or need. This system offers you a unique way to present yourself in a selling or prospecting environment, such as business networking. The communications process is of vital importance to the selling process, and how you present yourself is of vital importance to the communications process. An example of that is, you're in an elevator or at a meeting, and somebody asks you, what do you do? How do you present yourself in a way that's designed to produce a rewarding relationship, personally or financially? You can even use this way of communicating when you get on the phone and present yourself in such a way that people don't just say, hmm, that's nice, and hang up on you. So, if you want to present yourself more effectively, sell more easily, and live a happier life, that's what my system will help you achieve. So, here's your homework. Learn the system. We're going over the easier way to sell guidelines one by one, and you can find the list of the guidelines on page 15 of the Action Guide. The first guideline we covered is Seek the Truth. See, I believe you're on a mission to discover what is really true rather than just live by your own personal truth, because you have to remember that just because you believe something is true, that doesn't make it true. It just makes it true for you. In this episode, we're going to talk about guideline number two, which is we're all in sales. This guideline clarifies your relationship to the sales process, because whether you're getting someone to sign on the dotted line or getting your kids to clean up their bedroom, we're all in sales and we're all selling all of the time. And remember that nobody likes to be sold to, but you must sell to live. And the easier way to sell will help you shift your truth about selling and self-promotion. The easier way to sell model helps you feel more confident, more productive, and happier than you would have had you used the traditional way to sell, convince, and try to make things happen. In the case of the easier way to sell, the truth will set you free. Hello, listeners of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast. I'm here with my friend of uh, quite a few years, Ron Bashir, who's going to be talking to us today about a lot of subjects, but one that I know that'll be near and dear to your heart if you're doing any type of social media marketing at all will be LinkedIn and how to make the most out of LinkedIn. So that's going to be a, a pretty core um, conversation in our conversation, but there's some other things that I'd like to talk about. And uh, we'll start right off with, um, first of all, hello and welcome. Well, hello. It's so nice to see you. Yes, it's been it way is. too long. This, yeah. This Zoom uh, technology, I, I remember as a child thinking about 
oh no, video, video phones. What are they going to catch me doing? You know, I hope I'm not in the shower. That was the big conversation in the 50s yeah. and 60s. So I have a question first about your speaking engagements and your literally affecting people all over the world. And this is something I'm always interested in. When you're standing on that stage or in front of that audience and you're giving out information and sharing literally your your life's work here yeah on what one or two subjects do you see them most furiously writing down notes well usually it's about linkedin that's that's the main topic you know they're always surprised about when i talk about you know being in linkedin witness protection program like you know how nobody can ever get found so that's that's one when i'm showing them, you know, the things that they can do to easily change that, how to change your banner, your headline, and what your profile should change. Mm -hmm. And then the other topic that people are totally fascinated with, and it actually ties into LinkedIn a little bit, is um, I'm a certified face reader. And what that means is that there are certain features on your face that can, <laughs> don't hide, mm -hmm. certain features on your face that can give you um, really good insight into how to approach somebody. So when I'm, you know, when you have a meeting with somebody and you can look at their LinkedIn profile and look at their photo and, you know, want to develop instant rapport with them, that's one of the areas that people just, you know, are taking notes fast and furious because they're like, okay, I need to remember this so that I can, you know, know how to approach that person or develop that instant rapport or, you know, get that appointment. So well, I think that's the two areas. Excellent. When it comes to the face reading, as a center of influence, you talk about face reading, and I can just see listeners going, okay, face reading, how do, how do I learn about that? What's good about that? Tell us the, um, the application that someone would be able to put this to that would help them be more effective in um, closing the deal. Well, Imagine that you have a distinct advantage because face reading is really just seeing people the way they see themselves. Ooh, so, for okay. example, if you're sitting across from somebody and you're on a Zoom, okay, and one of the first things that you notice about this person is that they have these, you know, the Santa Claus cheeks, right? You know, those round cheeks. Well, what those cheeks really tell you is that that person is, is like a healer, right? So, what you know about that person is, oh, people feel really taken care of by that person because their cheeks are telling you that, you know, people feel safe and, and a lot of nurses you'll see have those kind of cheeks. Or maybe you see somebody and the first thing that you notice is they have very, very high ears. And I'm one of those people actually. So if you look and you go, okay, there's, you know, your ears are high. What does that tell you? That tells you that person's brain is really, really fast. They process like a fast computer. So if you know what certain characteristics mean and you can interpret them, always never judge judging them because it's not a perfect science. It's just a way to see people and know that they process information in a certain way or certain lines mean certain things then you have a distinct advantage to develop instant rapport with that person. And I'll give you a good example. Please. Um, I, this was before COVID. And um, I walked into a real estate office. I was doing a presentation there on LinkedIn. And they were running a little bit behind. And the woman that was sitting behind the reception desk, um, she was a lovely woman. And we just started chatting. And somehow I, I, I said to her, you know, I yeah, I, I bet that nobody in this office sends anything out unless they run it by you because you're a perfectionist. perfectionist. And she looked at me, she goes, how do you know that? <laughs> and I said, well, you know, it's those lines on your forehead. And, and she said, well, tell me more about this. You know, she was uh, fascinated. Uh, uh. And I said, you know, um, I can tell that you just are one tough cookie. You know, you've endured a lot in your life. You've seen a lot. And the right side of your face, by the way, is your personal, your, your business life. It's your public life. And your left side is your personal. And I said to her, I said, you know, you're a tough cookie. You've endured a lot of, of, of disappointment in your life and a lot of sadness. And the next thing I know, the woman's like practically crying. And she said, oh, oh my God, I lost my husband. And this job has just saved my life. 
You know, I love being of service. And, you know, I was just reading the lines on her face. You know, so it's it's just a way to develop rapport with people. It's and it's so much fun. I mean, it really is fun. And it does when, sound that yeah. Yeah, and when you combine that with you know knowing how to look at a LinkedIn profile so you can really get insight, it's super fun. You know, it is. Well, I I must admit that you just threw up a softball for me to to hit it back to you. What do you look for in a LinkedIn profile? So what you look for in a LinkedIn profile is number one, um, you know, what are the what are these people interested in? You know, because we all have to do business with people on the like no, no trust factor, right? Yeah. So you can look at a LinkedIn profile, and of course, you want to see, okay, who's this person's ideal client? You know, who do they do business with? What do other people think about them? Um, where do they go to school? But what you really want to look at is who is this person? What charities do they support? You know, what do they like to do in their personal time? I have a client who's a land banker. And, you know, honestly, land banking as a retirement strategy is a great thing, but there's nothing sexy or fun about it. But in her profile, she talks about how she actually used land banking herself as a strategy, and she started an orphanage in Vietnam. And she's an Air Force vet. So what you want to look for is a place to start that conversation and say, well, I'd love to know more about that orphanage that you started. And, you know, so the profile, the way you develop instant rapport with somebody is the same way you would do it in person. You'd look around somebody's room, somebody's wall, and you'd say, oh, I can see that you're a Dodger fan or you like golden retrievers. or the, But we can't do that anymore because we all have green screens. And you can't do that anymore because, you know, we're pretty much virtual and we don't go to offices. So what if you could look at somebody's profile and you could see, wow, they spend a lot of time volunteering for the Cancer Society. Or, you know, I, for example, my husband and I remarried through the Landmark Education Program. And I get a ton of people that will find me and they say, hey, you did Landmark? You know, and it's just like we, you know, we went to the same education kind of a thing. So that's what you look for. That's how you develop that rapport. The same way you would in person, except you're using the profile. You're just looking in different places. Well, I must admit your comment about Landmark. I, I hope our audience does not believe that what we're telling them is empty and meaningless. <laughs> <laughs> That's and an inside you joke for landmark, all you. You'll get that. Yeah, yeah. your Landmark attendees, you, you'll get that. And it's a wonderful way to look at the future. And uh, I'll leave that for another conversation. But uh, That was uh, how my husband and I remarried. It was actually because of Landmark. Well, um, no surprise, right? Yeah, I, I just have always loved that. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons behind my establishing this model was because I was at Landmark in the late 1980s, and I couldn't have loved it anymore, but the enrollment process uh, made me want to gag myself with yeah. a spoon. And so I developed this as well as for the sales business of how to have the enrollee explain to you why they needed it rather than you explain to them why they needed it. Exactly. And uh, because it was so transformational and so wonderful. And then it shifted into what, what seemed to me as a harder sell than I thought it, it could Yeah, be. for it sure. Absolutely. Better. Yeah. So back to LinkedIn, uh, what is it that you – would suggest that a profile writer, even for themselves, start off with, are you going more towards business or are you trying to let them know that I really am involved with charitable foundations and I know that has nothing to do with my business, but it gives you an idea about me? What, how much and what do you say? It's a great question. No, it really is a business to business platform. And when you think about the fact that 70 to 80% of the time when someone Googles your name, your LinkedIn profile is gonna show up on the first page of Google, mm -hmm. right? So it is a business platform and you do wanna tell people, this is who I serve, okay? These are the results that I get. Um, this is the call to action. Here's some sample clients or some sample industries that I work with, have a call to action. You do want to put a little bit about you personally. Um, and the reason that I say that is because you want a way for people to relate to you. Okay. But 
the most important thing is have a banner that actually, you know, reflects your brand, have a headline that tells people, you know, who you serve, what do you do? It's not just your title. And then in that about section, write it in first person and, you know, don't use the word I all the time, right? Just basically say, you know, here's the services I offer and then tell your backstory. You know, people want to know, why do you do what you do? It's, you know, they call it the mess to success. But the reality is, you know, we have to be able to relate to that person, whether we're going to hire them because they're our coach, they're our financial advisor, you know, they're our CPA, whoever they are. You want to know who they are. You want to be able to relate to them. Um, and then putting in a call to action. You know, if somebody's on your profile, what do you want them to do? Book an appointment with you? Do you want them to go to a web page, to a landing page? Do you want them to message you? You need to tell people what to do. And what have you seen that keeps most people from producing as an effective profile with an about uh, that might be readily, if not easily, corrected? Well, for starters, um, first of all, taking that headline and um, <laughs> if you have your job title as your headline, change it, okay? Use the 220 characters that LinkedIn gives you. Good tip. In your about section, stop using the word I. Okay. Um, don't do it in third person. And make sure you make it easy on the eyes. You know, a lot of people just put a bunch of run-on sentences together and it's very hard to read. So you want to make sure this, you know, good spacing you want and you want to step into the shoes of the person reading it. And if it speaks to that person who's your ideal prospect or referral partner, you've done a good job. You've done it right. Yeah. The the challenge with the run on sentences, et cetera, I I know I don't yeah. always make as many friends when I discuss this, but I believe writing skills are one of the most underdeveloped uh, skills yeah. that are available now for most business people and entrepreneurs. The whole process of communication leaves so much to be desired. Uh, the, what I recommend to clients all of the time is do your best to move away from show and tell. And yeah. how do you set that up for yourself personally? That's a good question to ask. How do, how do I share what it is that I do and the difference that I make without always talking about how I do it and what I do it? Because most people don't care. They care about what you can do for them. So That's true. And there's yeah. a section on the profile called Featured. And, um, you know, putting case studies there, even if you don't have names, maybe you want to protect the names of your clients. Uh, one of my clients actually is um, a commercial real estate broker. And, you know, when I upgraded his profile and we worked together and I coached him, we put three of his case studies right in the featured section. And he started posting. We, I upgraded his profile for him. And within less than six months, he added an additional seven figures of income. He went up 29%. Wow. And yeah. And, you know, the truth is that all he really did was consistently post, reached out, you know, got recommendations, gave recommendations, and showed up like the professional that he was. So it clearly works. And I have hundreds of stories that are just like that. But the truth is, you have to start out with a profile that reflects who you are and is written towards attracting your ideal client or referral partner. Okay. Let's say that a person has done their best to create a profile and it is somewhat effective and they have a presence. They are not, what did you call it? Uh, not uh, in the LinkedIn witness protection program. Yeah, that, I love that. Like nobody's going to find me ever. Yeah. Uh, when you get past that, you mentioned about referrals and commenting. What is the hierarchy of the way to deal with both incoming contacts and outgoing comments? So part of it is, you know, I'm a big fan of using the paid version of LinkedIn. In fact, using Sales Navigator. Um, but when people are connecting with you, you know, you want to be somewhat um, picky about who you're going to accept. You know, my rule is, you know, no picture, 
sorry, not going to accept you. If you're from a country I can't pronounce or you're, it isn't in English, um, you know, you need, so they need to send a personal connection request. And conversely, when you're sending out connection requests, you want to put it. So it might be something like, you know, I came across your profile and noticed that we share X number of common connections. We're both landmark grads. We, you know, whatever it happens to be, love to connect, look forward to learning more about you and mm -hmm. your business. And then once you connect with me, then in continuing to engage, say, thanks so much for connecting with me. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about me, and then I'd love to know more about you and maybe inviting you to jump on a call. So that's one of the ways. The other is take a look at who's been looking at your profile. You know, there are people that look at your profile but never connect with you or are connected with you and look, but don't bother to make a phone call or a message. So reach out to those people. Think of them like all as your old first and second cousins, right? That, you know, only show up at weddings and funerals. Yeah. So it's an opportunity to re-engage with them and say, hey, I noticed that you viewed my profile. Curious, what was it that caught your eye? Or, you know, we've been connected for a while and I noticed you viewed my profile. You know, wondering how you're doing during 2020, now that the pandemic is still going, you know, whatever. So you want to take advantage of all that. So when you were talking about Sales Navigator, before that you mentioned why you think that the professional version of LinkedIn is really the best way to go. Would you share that with us, what your reasons are? Yeah, number one, um, when you're, even if you're reconnecting with your existing connections, using Sales Navigator, you have an additional 12 filters that you can search through. And this is in LinkedIn, correct? Correct. And above and beyond that, you can do a very exhaustive search to find those people that fit your criteria. And then you can use in-mail, you can use messaging to be able to connect with those people. And without Sales Navigator, you're, number one, you're going to hit the limit on the number of people that you can connect with. But number two, you don't have all of those filters and you can't save the searches. So Sales Navigator is an amazing tool. And whether you're using Sales Navigator or Premium, it allows you to see beyond the first three or five people that have viewed your profile. And mm -hmm. that's pretty important. So, you know, Sales Navigator is just, you know, for $79 a month, or I think it's 20% less if you buy it annually, it's a tool that could put a lot of money in your pocket. But like anything else, you need to use it. Let's talk about posting for a second. All right, okay. let's, let's talk about posting for a second. Because, you know, it's an interesting thing that 94% um, of B2B marketers are actually getting their content through LinkedIn. And it's so easy to just post something like other people's posts and share them and engage with the people that, you know, that are engaging with your posts or with other people's posts. And what is really cool about that is that it builds slowly, but once it starts to build, it really takes off. And then you have an opportunity to reach out to those people that actually took the time to like your posts, to start a conversation with them and say, hey, I thank so much for liking my post about, you know, whatever it was that I happened to put up there. Um, I did a post, I think it was yesterday, um, and it was a video and it was a, a little boy in a classroom, which hopefully kids will get back to soon. And all the kids were taking out their lunch boxes and the little boy opens his lunch box and it's empty. There's literally nothing in there. So he raises his hand and he asks to leave the room, goes down the hall, gets a drink of water, comes back and you know, he's just got this sad, sad face on. And he opens up his lunch box again and all of a sudden it was filled with all kinds of grapes and food and you could see all the kids smiling because when he left to go get the drink of water and all the kids knew they filled his lunchbox with food it was that tiny little act of kindness and you know it was a 55 second video and i i put on there you know what acts of kindness have you done lately you know it can really change somebody's life and again 80 percent of what you post can just be motivational and inspirational. 20% can be related to your business. But those are the things that, you know, people smile about. And that's how you get engagement. Can you and give an example of a motivational or confirmational post? Yeah, actually, you know, on New Year's Day, I was thinking, okay, what can I post on New Year's Day that's going to really, 
you know, get people to smile. And um, it wasn't even my post. It was actually somebody else's and I shared it. And it was three millennial young women and they had the words uh, 2020 in rice. And it was like, you know, if you remember those old puzzles, those wooden puzzles, you know, and you, and it was, they just threw it up and it was like, bye bye 2020. And it was just so original. So I put uh, something on there. I just said, bye bye 2020, right? That post has gotten 69,000 views, about 754 comment likes. Um, I can't really even remember how many comments and it's been reshared over 20 times. And, you know, the motivation in that is, yes, goodbye 2020, we've had enough, right? Let's welcome 2021. Or just using um, things that you find on Instagram, right? Making sure you always give credit to where you got the post. But, you know, positive statements. And um, it's amazing what kind of interaction you can get. People are starving for that. I know, I know. Uh, you brought up the reach of some of the posts in terms of thousands of views or hundreds and hundreds of comments. What have you seen over your experience with LinkedIn that is the key to something being really accepted versus something being looked at? Number one, it's being authentic. It's really being authentic. Number two, it's really engaging with others. You know, you can put out really great content, but if you don't engage or, you know, play well with others, then you won't get it back. So, you know, one of the things that you want to do is always make sure, you know, when you're looking through your feed or you're following certain people that you like and reshare their material. You know, I was really fortunate. I was put on a list of like one of the top hundred influencers. I don't even know how I got on there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but when somebody likes or comments on your post, always, always, you know, comment back and like back and respond because that's what gets the algorithm going. You know, you don't want to just let it fall on dead air in the same way when somebody, you know, accepts your connection request and then you never send a thank you note. You never you know, engage with them. So they, it's, it's like a billboard, right? How many billboards have we driven by and we don't pay attention to? No. And yet, right, and that's what a view is. A view is just, it's a billboard. So somebody, you know, looked at it. But what you really want is the engagement. So think about it this way. If you're a strict vegan and the billboard that you're driving by says In-N-Out Burger, it's not even gonna hit your radar. You're just gonna keep driving. But if you like in and out Burger and you're starving and you're driving down the freeway and it says next exit in and out Burger, you're probably going to pay attention and you're going to get off and you're going to wait in the line because there's always a line to get your in and out Burger. Well, when somebody takes the time to actually like or comment or share your post, it gives you a reason to reach out to them to engage with them, right? So it builds. It's like any muscle. And so what I'm so hearing is the tip is is that it's the interaction absolutely that really is not only triggers whatever the algorithm is but that in real life you know it goes back to people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care and what you said before, I think, especially now, uh, you know, and no matter when you are listening or to or watching this, we are now in the early stages of 2021 and COVID has really not left the premises by any means. So uh, both for the rapport building, everybody's got something in common now. And also for the flip side, what you were talking about, loneliness and, and isolation has really put a lot of people into a position where they're going, is it really worth my doing this? And I think what you said, and I, I hadn't really thought about this, it's such a good way to interact with people. If you're on LinkedIn for a reason that you know, rather than you're just on, I guess the recommendation would be to start using it. Yeah, for sure. You know, many years ago, there was a gentleman that used to post every day and 
he wasn't on LinkedIn to get business. In fact, his business was, you know, he would go to his computer at the end of the week, they would tell him what city to go to the next week, and he would go out and help the sales force close deals. And so he was just posting a bunch of motivational and inspirational stuff. And, you know, every day I would, that would be the first thing I would see. And it always made me smile. You know, it's, it's like, I look for, I'm one of those people that still gets the newspaper, right? And the only reason I get the newspaper is I do the crossword. You know, it's just kind of funny. I like the paper crossword. So um, I sent him a note and I said, hey, I just want to say thanks. Every day you bring a smile to my face. I don't know if you know this, but I so appreciate um, the, what you post. And I share it, by the way, with a lot of the people in, on my list. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you. And he wrote back and said, nobody has ever thanked him. And um, that it just made his day. And he said, is there anything I can do for you? That's marvelous. And, yeah. And I said, no, 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 no. I just wanted to let you know. He said, well, I've been watching you. And I would love to share what you do with my you know, list. Well, his list was about 100,000 people. It was crazy. He had so many followers. Wow. And, and so I said, well, that would be awesome. I said, can I, can I tweak your profile for you? Can I do anything? And he goes, oh, does my profile need tweaking? And I was like, well, you know, maybe just a little. He said, well, let me pay you. Let me pay you. And I said, no, no, no. Your money doesn't work at my bank. Let me just do this for you. And so I upgraded his profile for him. And literally, my inbox blew up. I don't know what he sent out. I don't know what he did. But all of this because I just said, hey, thank you so much for brightening my day. So you never know where this is going to go. Honestly, you just never know when you, and it's always about coming from a place of being authentic and genuine. You know, you're not doing it for the likes. You're not doing it for, you know, to get the attention, you know, you're doing it because you genuinely want to make a difference. You being. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, you mentioned another trait that I, find sorely missing in not only communication, but in general, and that's kindness. Yeah. And I know that you really talk about that in detail and talk about the the benefits of it, even if you're not out for the benefit, there's a benefit in being kind. And I'm, I, I just think that a lot of that has been lost, especially in today's, you know, a digital world where the contact between people is even less and the ability to show kindness might be looked at as an afterthought. And I think a lot of that has to do that if somebody takes the time to comment or react or interact with you based on something that you've taken the time to put together and put out there, even if it was just a thought, by all means, be kind. You know, you can't expect reciprocity, but you can seed reciprocity, I believe, by just being kind and, and saying thank you. So uh, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you a quick story. Um, I have two daughters, they're 29 and 31, and my 29-year-old was uh, driving through Starbucks one day and, you know, she works for a nonprofit and she's very much the giver, you know, and she goes to pay for her coffee. And the person at the um, window said, oh, the car in front of you paid for it. She was like, what? You know, like she was totally shocked. And she said, OK, we'll just pay for the car in back of me, you know, and it and, and she was just so that one little act of kindness, you know, just changed everything. It, it literally changed everything. And, you know. We just uh, moved, right? We bought a house in Carlsbad. And um, I don't know if you know Henry DeVries. Do you know Henry? He's a ghostwriter. He's a pretty amazing guy. I don't think so, no. I've known Henry a long, long time. And um, and I actually refer a lot of people to Henry because he's exceptional as a ghostwriter. And, um, you know, for the longest time, we lived about an hour away from each other, right? And he's actually working with my husband, which is kind of funny. And on Saturday, he just out of the blue, you know, stopped by uh, with his mask, you know, socially distant and just dropped off this really nice housewarming gift, you know, and it was um, salt and sugar and a bottle of wine and the salt, you know, it all the, sh- the sugar was to welcome the sweetness into your house. And, you know, like there's a little note with all of it, right? Knowing that my husband's like a wine connoisseur. And it just, you know, made our day. I thought, wow, who does that? You know, who 
brings over housewarming gifts when they can't even come into your house, you know, and yeah. it shows you these acts of kindness. And it's, it's just the little things that make the biggest difference. So well, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. It, it'll be interesting to see how adaptable we are as humans coming out of this because, you know, I watch movies now and I get upset that they're not wearing masks and they're movies from the 1950s. You know? so, oh, funny. Yeah. so, you know, they're not wearing masks. They're too close to each other. So the ability to break now, what is a year long habit track and come yeah. back out, you know, that's one of the things that I'm focusing on now is that there has to be a kinder and gentler way to sell when we come to the other side of this. No one's going to want to sit there and have someone try to convince them and influence them about anything. You know, they're, yeah. they just just want to come up for air. So uh, the importance, though, of LinkedIn and that type of communication during the pandemic cannot be underplayed uh, because of how powerful it's been. You know, I had not been on LinkedIn very much and I gravitated towards it. And who would have thought that a Zoom conversation such as this and the others that we're having would make such a big impact? You know, a year ago, said the person who didn't know and didn't buy the stock. <laughs> me either. There you go. Yeah. 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 Nobody told me. I know. I know. I wish. So, yeah. It's, it's all right. There'll be another Zoom uh, with soon. But, um, what you're doing, I think, now is so helpful because it's giving people that little extra leg up in their ability to communicate and communicate effectively without having to be face to face. And that's really what LinkedIn and the other platforms are. They're how you're sharing yourself and what you do. And uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge you're having in getting people to do what they know that they should do? Because I have that problem in terms of, uh, you know, people learning to do something they're not used to. You know, I think for a lot of people, the technology sometimes becomes overwhelming. You know, you mm -hmm. know, they don't understand Zoom. They don't understand how to set up Calendly or one of those programs. Um and it, it, you know, and we, we're spending too much time in front of a computer. We're not spending time with people, you know, for the most part. So I, I the biggest challenge is just, you know, handling the technology more than anything else. I think that's really what it is. Getting over the shock of, of the interface, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think wow. that's what it is. And learning to use green screens and, you know, and ring lights and, you know, like I'm not using a green screen right now, but typically I do, you know, and, um, you know, and how do you show up on camera, you know, and, you know, getting the right mic and headphones and sound and, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's overwhelming whether you're young or you're old. It, it can be very overwhelming. Not only that. And I talked about this yesterday on a, on a conversation I was having on LinkedIn where people uh, have a tendency of going inside right now, even though they want to be listened to and understood and communicate. Yeah. But they're having a hard time because I, I say it's because of what we were programmed as by our parents or our parents substitutes like teacher or clergy when we were taught as children, never speak to strangers. Right. Don't speak unless you're spoken to and you should be seen and not heard. Yeah. And you know, here we have to go out and do the exact opposite on a daily basis, whether it's digitally or in person. And, you know, I guess that's why speaking in front of a group is still feared more than drowning. Um, so uh, I just want to throw that in there that that may be a, a, another hitch in someone's get along is actually being willing to communicate on yet another channel. So well, and a lot of people are used to texting, you know, especially the younger people. That's how they, you know, 
communicate. You know, it's all voice and text. And well, in we about actually, 10 or 15 years, they'll be on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have to actually see people and actually talk to people and actually, yeah. you know, leave voicemail messages. It's a whole different world. So my question in oh, how do I, so many noises. I apologize. No worries. So here is what I would like to do. If there was one thing that you could share to the listeners of the Close the Deal Without Selling podcast that you think they could take with them and, you know, just grab onto it and go, I'm going to do that. I believe that this will be good for me. What would that be? Actually, go to somebody that knows you pretty well, that knows what you do, and ask them to look at your LinkedIn profile and say to them, mm -hmm. you know, if I were going mm -hmm. to refer to you based on what's here, you know, if, if that, if all that you could see was what was on this profile, would you still refer to me? Like, would it give you enough confidence to, you know, make that referral? If the answer is no, then you need to either, you know, take that profile down or fix it up. Because people don't, it's, it's the blind spot, right? The blind spot is you don't know what you don't know. People don't realize how they're showing up on their digital footprint. So, you know, ask somebody that will give you honest feedback. Um, and if you don't, reach out to me and I'll give you, you know, a, a free audit. I'll actually do that for you. That's um, very generous. I think that's, I think that's really what you, you know, what I would say is, you know, have somebody else. Because if we don't know, you know, we can look at it and go, oh, this looks great. Maybe it does for you, but you're not the client, the, the, you know, the referral partner, the prospect. So you want somebody to step into those shoes and look at it and give you really honest feedback. So you brought up people contacting you. And I think that there is a key to making that happen. And that's you telling us how we can contact you. So the best way to contact me is actually just send an email. And uh, the best email is LinkedIn Diva. So it's L-I-N-K-E-D-I-N-D-I-V-A, LinkedIn Diva at gmail.com. And just put that you heard me on this show and you'd like your free LinkedIn audit or connect with me on LinkedIn or just go to Rob LinkedIn Planner. There's a LinkedIn Planner right there. Excellent. And I really want to extend the thanks in proxy for all of the listeners, because I know how important a topic this is for the type of individual and professional who listens to this podcast. These are people in appointment based sales who are looking to, as I've said for years, turn their contacts into contracts more easily and more often. And what you're helping them with is getting contacts in a state of relationship, authentic relationship, in which turning them from one to the other, they're doing it because they trust and they believe in you based on how you've communicated with them, not because you walk in and they're dazzled by your magnificence. So uh, I invite all of you to uh, look at what Rhonda has done over the years. And if you really need help with that, please contact her. You know, I tell you when I can do stuff, that's not, that's not my wheelhouse. And uh, I'm going to call her. So uh, uh, I just, uh, on behalf of everyone, I really want to thank you again for giving information. My, my pleasure. Thanks. My it was fun day. being here with you. Yeah. Thanks. So, um, Take care, stay healthy, and I look forward to us talking soon. Me too. Thanks, I Take care. Bye-bye. All right, that'll do it for this episode. That was an enjoyable conversation. I want to thank Rhonda again for taking the time to come and share her information with us. Uh, if there's one takeaway that I would suggest you 
take away is authentic engagement, whether it's on LinkedIn or other social media platforms. Authentic engagement will take you well on down the road of success when it comes to your social media marketing. Also, I'd like you to give uh, as much thought as you have time for to the idea of the easier way to present yourself. We are all in sales. We are selling all of the time. But how you present yourself is key. And I believe that this model will help you present yourself in a way that, as you know, will result in more success, both on a personal and business level. This is Ike Krieger. See you next time.